All right. Uh, well, the first fly today uh, is going to be a crayfish pattern that I tie. And uh, what I'd like to start out doing is show you how I make these claws. Um, this is just a piece of two millimeter fly foam. Um, and what I do is I cut a strip of this fly foam. And it doesn't have to be very big. If you get these claws too big, uh, surprisingly enough, they'll actually float the fly. And then from that strip, I cut little squares of the foam. So you end up with little pieces of foam that look like this. Um, then the claws are going to mount um, to uh, rubber leg material. And I like to use the barred rubber leg material. And I just cut one of those off. And then what I do is I'll thread that through the eye of a very large uh, sewing needle. And then you can take the sewing needle, push it up through the edge of the foam. So I'm pushing it up through the edge, not through the side. You push that all the way through. And when it comes out the other side, then you just cut that loop. Take the needle out, you're left with a claw that looks like that. And I put a little drop of super glue right here, and I make a few hundred of these at night uh, at one time, and then just let them all dry. And then when I'm ready to tie the fly, uh, I've got a big box of them all ready to go. Um, and uh, uh, I just take them out looking like that and trim them to shape when I need them. First uh, step, of course, is get the hook in the vise. And this hook is a bent shank hook. And everything I do on this fly is really um, predicated on getting the fly to sit in a very natural uh, fighting position on the bottom of the, of the lake or river. Uh, so this, this um, hook has a bent shank to it. And uh, I'm going to put lead eyes on top of this hook. And with that bent shank and these lead eyes, I'm going to sink the top of this hook right to the bottom of the stream or the lake, and it's going to sit like this. It's going to flip the hook over, and having the hook ride up like that will make the fly more weedless. I start the thread, come back in, leave myself enough room to tie off the fly when I'm done, and just start a pair of lead dumbbell eyes right there. And I usually take a little bit of super glue. And after I've just got them lashed into place a little bit, I'll put some super glue on top of the eyes. And this isn't to um, bind the eyes to the hook. This is so that when I wrap my thread through the super glue, it kind of bonds the thread all in one big wad there and helps stabilize the eyes on the hook. And just figure eight that on. Once that's on secure, now I take the hook, reposition it in the vice jaws so the main part of the hook shank where I'm going to be tying now is horizontal. Come all the way to the back. And I like to lay down a base of thread um, because uh, the thread is not going to be as slippery as the shank of the hook. So it'll allow me to hold materials on the hook a little bit easier. They won't tend to slide out as much. This is a little bit of root beer crystal flash. I'm just going to tie this in at the back. And I just lash it down good. I'm not worried too much about bulk on this fly. Roughly measure the length of the fly. And that's how I trim the crystal flash is about the length of the fly body. And it's not critical. Uh, the next material is going to be um, some thin skin. I like this. It's a durable uh, plastic sheet. It's on a uh, paper backing, but it's got some nice modeling and some nice different colors. Trim a thin strip of that off. And then I have to use uh, some kind of little hook or material. 
you separate the plastic sheet from the paper backing. Then I like to trim just a little bit of a V in that plastic sheet. Makes it a little easier to catch with the hook or with the thread. And another thing that I do is I'm going to um, twist my thread. Uh, if you're looking down at the thread, I'm going to twist it in a counterclockwise direction. I'm going to flip the fly over for a second. And by um, twisting the thread that direction, if I let slack, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but the, the thread will back up towards the back end of the hook. So when I put this material in here, come over the top, the thread wants to work back this direction on the hook and it helps it come up over the top of the material and grab the material. So I catch that V and wrap all the way back to the point where I tied the crystal flash off. Now the plastic is kind of on my side of the hook right now and I want it right up on this what's going to be the top of the fly which is the bottom of the hook. So I just pull it over to the side and then cinch the hook, cinch the thread down a little bit. Put a few more good wraps down and kind of hold that out of the way. This dubbing is uh, the, what I use as craw dub. It's an SLF dubbing. It's got long fibers. Uh, it's got a little bit of sparkle to it. And it lets me um, comb this fly out when I'm done and get a real shaggy looking fly. I'm just going to put a little ball of dubbing right back here to cover up the tie-in point where I put in the thin skin um, and the crystal flash. And for the eyes of the fly, I'm just going to take a strip of black round rubber leg material, come up, secure it on top of the hook, pull one strand to each side, wrap it back to the dubbing ball, and use the dubbing ball to help spread those eyes out to the side of the fly. The next material that goes in are these pre-made claws. And before I tie them in, I'm going to snip this little piece of uh, rubber that's sticking out. And I'm also going to trim the shape of the foam a little bit to a, to a triangle. The shape, I don't really believe, is that important to the fish. But it makes the fly look a little bit dressier in your box. So I'm going to put one of these on each side of the hook. And I measure the length so that the claw is just about even with the back of the crystal flash. And another important thing about uh, these claws, when, uh, when they're on this flexible arm, um, if you don't tie them in just right, they can catch around the hook point when you cast. So one thing I make sure I do as you can see, the thread's hanging straight down right here, and that's actually a little bit past the point of the hook. So I've, I've secured that arm back past the point of the hook. It makes it harder for the arm to bend back around and catch on the hook point when you're casting. So I put one on my side. I put one on the far side of the hook. Wrap those down good. These crayfish are a fairly bulky food item, so I'm going to have a big fat body on this guy uh, to make it a little bit faster to tie and a little bit uh, less expensive to tie. I'm just going to get some cheap yarn. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. I try and roughly match the color of the yarn to the color of the body of the fly in case it does show through. But this is just an underbody to build up um, the fly a little bit so that I'm not building up the whole shape of the body with yarn. When I get up to the, where the claws are at, I'm going to go between the claws and the eyes and build a little head in between the claws and the eyes. So at this point, you can see once I've got this material in, that the claws are sticking almost straight out to the side of the hook. And having the claws stick straight out like that is fairly important because that's another thing that will help keep them from wrapping around the hook point when you cast.
Now when you're fishing the fly, um, the claws are going to want to float up. So the water pressure is going to lift these claws into a position like this and sit the back of the fly right on the bottom of the stream or the lake. Um, and when you swim the fly, it'll incre increase the pressure even more and it'll push those claws together just like a natural crayfish when it swims to get more aerodynamic. It puts its claws together out in front of it. So it's got a very natural posture in the water. Now this will make a little bit more sense when we tie in the hackle and the wire, but um, so that I don't have to dub around in front of the hackle and the wire, I'm going to dub the head of the fly and right around the base of the claws before I tie that material in. Just hold the claws and hold the eyes. Keep them out of the way while you're putting the dubbing in. And don't go too far back on the fly. You want this right up just around the base of the claws, the arms. Um, next material I'm going to put in is this uh, ultra or uh, UTC wire. This is a, a ginger color. I tie this fly in about nine or ten different colors. Um, and you just pick wire and hackle that kind of goes with the basic coloration of the fly. I'm going to tie the wire in. It's going to look like it's going backwards. So I tie it with the short end uh, towards the front of the fly and the long end of the wire out the back. Because I'm tying on a compressible material, it's easy to pull this wire out. So I tie it in backwards like that and then fold it over and tie back towards the front again. And now I've got that wire really trapped in there uh, and you really can't pull it out. For the hackle on the fly, I usually use a whiting um, Euro saddle. Um, they've got just enough stiffness that the hackle will help hold the front end of the fly up off the bottom. And the whole thing about this fly is I'm doing everything I can to keep it angled up like that. This doesn't need to be super, super long. Um, so I'm going a little bit more than a hook gap on the feather width. Trim off a little spot to tie it in. And tie it in right where the wire's at. So you can see now with this wire and this hackle on here why it was easier to dub this front part of the fly before I tied this in. I don't have to work around it. Finish the body of the fly off. I'm going to use some more of the same dubbing. And you see I got a nice chunky silhouette to the fly already because of the yarn underbody. I don't need to use anywhere near as much dubbing to build it up as you would otherwise. When I'm working with dubbing I like to work with small amounts and keep adding it. Uh, it's a little bit trickier to take it off the thread than it is to add to the thread. Work it all the way to the back right to the dumbbell eyes, keep twisting it on so it's on there tight. Then I'm going to wrap first, I'm going to palmer the hackle. And I try and make a couple extra tight wraps right up at the front of the fly. And then towards the back, I open up the spiral and palmer it a lot looser. Tie that off right behind the dumbbell eyes. Clip it off. Then I'm going to flip the fly over, which is right side up, the way I'm going to fish it, but the hook really seems upside down. Trim the hackle off the top. Take this thin skin, again work it over to the top of the fly, pull it back, and work it back, and pull it right tight against the eye of the fly, and then right behind the barbells, Catch it with the thread, tie it off, pull it a little bit tight to trim it, and then the tag end will snap back just a little bit and you won't have as much bulk to wrap down over the top of when you're done. 
I'm going to counter rib the wire over the top of the thin skin to give some segmentation to the carapace. Catch the wire in the back. Break it off. You can whip finish the fly. Done with the thread. I'm going to flip it over. Again, I want the back end of the fly to sit down flush as it can to the bottom. So I'm going to trim all the hackle off the bottom and leave this out here for legs. Grab both pieces of rubber leg material, trim those off just a little bit shorter than the crystal flash. Then I take a dubbing, dubbing brush that's got a nylon bristle brush. Um, and the reason that the nylon bristles are important is because they're a lot less abrasive on your thread and your hackle stem. So when you get down in here with this hackle already wrapped through the fly, you're less likely to tear the fly up, break your hackle stem when you're brushing this dubbing out. And I want to brush this dubbing out, kind of get it to mix with the hackle. and that finishes off the fly.